The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Hello and welcome to Kingdom Connection. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm standing in the lobby of our beautiful facility here in Gwinnett County and right uh, north of Atlanta. It's just a beautiful place where hundreds and hundreds of people in the last year have found home for them spiritually. And uh, we're excited about what God is doing. I want to thank all of our friends and partners who've helped us as we have enlarged our territory. This is one of four campuses that we have. Uh, we have another campus in Gainesville and, of course, a campus in Orange County, California that is just thriving and doing powerful things there in Irvine, California. And as we have been planning, we are also going to be opening a brand new campus in the Spartanburg, Greenville, South Carolina area. So keep your ears open. But I wanted to say thank you for all of you who have helped us and stood with us and standing in the lobby where... Uh, over 2,000 people a Sunday have made this place their home, and we're celebrating that one-year anniversary. And I encourage you, if you don't have a home church, come check out Free Chapel in any of those locations. I promise you, you'll encounter the presence of the Lord. Today, I want to talk to you about something that's on my heart. Specifically, I want to pray a four-fold prayer over your life before our time ends today. And I believe when I do that God is going to honor what I'm going to pray over your life because it's right out of His Word. And I've been preaching on prophecy, as you know, for the last few weeks and really focusing on uh, some of the things that just seem so current that it's like when you read the Bible, you're reading the newspaper. And one of the main characters in end-time prophecy, or, or as the Bible calls them, the last days, is, of course, the nation of Israel. Everything is centered around Israel and Bible prophecy. And I found four things about natural Israel that I want to share with you, I believe, are encouraging uh, facts that, that as it goes with natural Israel, so it goes with spiritual Israel, which is the church, which is the believer, you and I. So first of all, I want you to see these four parallels between Israel and the church, or Israel, even more specific, and you, the believer. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are the church. You know, he had a, he had a, in the Old Testament, he had a, a, a temple for his people. But under the new covenant, God has a people for his temple. We are the church. And just as I see four facts about natural Israel, the nation of Israel, I see running parallel with them those same blessings that are upon you and I, the church, the body of Christ, the believer. First of all, the first thing I see about natural Israel is number one, they are protected. They're protected. They're surrounded by 175 million people who do not like them. They have on one border uh, Syria with ISIS. They have on, all around them enemies like Hezbollah who are shooting rockets in. They have other nations like Iran that have nuclear capability or developing it quickly. And their president gets up at the United Nations and he rants and raves and says that Israel should be driven into the sea and wiped off of the face of the earth. They have all of these enemies that surround them. They have Russia and all of the, all of the nations uh, that, that seem so unfriendly and seem so uh, full of animosity toward the nation of Israel. And yet, even though they're a tiny place the size of New Jersey, only six million people in the nation of Israel, and uh, they're a tiny minority, the majority is against them, and yet they are protected. ISIS can't destroy them. Hezbollah cannot destroy them. Iran cannot destroy them. Al-Qaeda cannot destroy them. All the enemies that they have, but they are sovereignly and mightily protected by the hand of the Lord. That's the good news. No matter 
what assails against them, they are protected supernaturally by the hand of the Lord. As it is with natural Israel, so it is with spiritual Israel, the believer, you, your family, your children, your grandchildren, your life. We, we are not to be people of fear. We are not to be people who are tormented day and night fearful and worried. We are protected according to Psalms 91. He will give His angels charge over us. And it doesn't matter how many are assailing against you. It doesn't matter how many forces or how many people are coming against you. The Scripture said that He'll give His angels charge over us to, to keep us in all of our ways. We are protected. Israel is protected. They have enemies, but the, the enemies can't prosper. As a matter of fact, in Psalms 48 and 12, God told one of the prophets, walk around Zion, walk around and look at the walls and teach the generations to come that these walls will stand. What he was saying is there's nothing that will come against the walls of Jerusalem that will ever tear them down because that is my city. And Saddam couldn't get to her and the PLO couldn't get to it and Iran with its nuclear weapons will never be able to get to it and Russia with its power and it will not be able to get to it and China with its massive war machine will never get to it because God said I will protect Jerusalem and Israel and I want to say our, our American politicians if they side with other nations against Israel. They'll never be able to take that land and give it away. Why? Because God said, I'll protect it. And the same blessing of protection is over you. The hedge of the Lord is around you. The angels of the Lord are watching over you and your children day and night. And Isaiah proclaimed, no weapon formed against you will prosper. My daughter, uh, Connor, is 17 years old. We had something kind of terrifying happen to us not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago. We got a call in the middle of the night and she was screaming and crying on the other end of the phone. We felt so hopeless because we were not where she was and she was going to a friend's house. And she had a man who apparently the police felt had been watching her and he pulled in front of her and as the light changed, he got in the middle of the intersection and, and it was late at night. There was nobody but these two cars and he hit his brakes suddenly and she, of course, came right up on him. She slammed her brakes. She didn't hit him, but it was so close she thought that he did. He quickly jumped out of the car and he said, you hit my car. He started screaming, you hit my car, you hit my car, pull over, pull over here. And so she, being a 17-year-old teenager, not fully realizing the moment, nervous, shaking, she pulled over into this area. It's an area where there's not a lot of people and nobody at that time of the night. And when she got out of her car, she said, which she should have never done, you know, but this is, this is why we pray for protection. Watch this. So she's getting out of her car and she gets her insurance car and her driver's license because the man's saying, come look, come look. And she gets out of the car, and when she walks up, she, he, 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 she said, you hit my car. And she said, I don't see anything, but if I hit it, then we need to call the police. He said, no, don't call the police. He said, get in the back seat and have sex with me. How old are you? And she said, I'm 17. He said, you get in the car and have sex with me. And she started screaming and running uh, to the back, to, to back to her car and, of course, got on the phone, locked the door. And the man became startled and afraid and got in his car and skidded off. And she, of course, called us and we get this phone call in the middle of the night. And she is hysterical out of her mind, screaming. And, of course, we called the police and they came and told us and informed us that someone in that area had been doing uh, these things and attacking women. And the only question that I had was, why didn't he attack my daughter? Why? He, his plan was working. But the Bible said God can put a hedge around our children. God can put a wall of protection around our families. And just as Israel, there's no natural explanation as to why that nation, the size of New Jersey, is, is so protected and so powerful that all of her enemies that greatly outnumber her and are mightier than her cannot touch her. 
And I'm thankful today for the protection of the Lord. I'm speaking protection over you. Number one, Israel is protected and so are you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you and your family. Protected against disease. Protected against the attacks of the enemy. Protected against, you know, financial devastation. I believe in the protective hand and power of God. Angels of God. The hedge. Job said there's a hedge around me and my family. And even Satan had to acknowledge, I can not get through that hedge. May the hedge go back up. May there come protection over you and your family as is with Israel. Secondly, Israel is not only protected, but Israel is prosperous. You know, it's a prosperous nation. It was a barren land in 1948. Nothing but a miserable, dead, dry desert. And when the Jews were given that state and they took that place over, suddenly the desert began to bloom. Isaiah 35 says, the desert shall bloom. This was a prophecy. The desert shall bloom like a rose. And when you go to Israel, if you've ever been, and I have many times, you will see in the middle of the desert, all the nations around them, they're poor, they're impoverished, they, they, they don't have enough food, but go to Israel and you will see orange blossoms for miles and miles and miles. You'll see banana plantations, you'll see olive trees, you'll see all the amazing fruit and flowers. Do you know that one of the major, and I think the late, late last time I read, they were uh, number one in the export of flowers, just fulfilling that scripture. The desert will bloom like a rose. And for miles and miles and miles, they have bananas and oranges right out in the middle of the desert. They've learned how to, to, to bring the crops. And do you know that Israel imports no food? They have more than enough to feed themselves. They're one of the biggest exporters of food and fruit and flowers all over the world. They are making the desert bloom. They are protected and they are a prosperous people. And I want to say to you, the Bible declares not only are you protected, but just like natural Israel is, is prosperous, so God speaks prosperity over you. They are blessed, he said, in the city. My children, my church, my people. Listen to the promise of Deuteronomy. You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the field. You will be blessed going in and coming out. You will be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. We are a prosperous people. Listen to Joshua 1 and 8. He said, the book of the law, this book shall not depart out of your mouth. Keep saying it. Keep confessing it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. That's God's word. We are a prosperous people. We have good success because we honor his word. The, I love Psalms 115 that says the Lord will prosper you and increase you more and more. You and your children. This is your makeup year. This is your catch-up year. Do you know the Bible said that He could restore the years the locust and the canker worm have taken away? What does that mean? That means God can give you a makeup year. God can give you a catch-up year where He blesses you. The Lord will bless the work of your hands. Deuteronomy chapter 8 said, It is God that gives you the power to get wealth, to establish His covenant in the earth. And I'm agreeing with you for the year of comeback. I'm agreeing with you for the year of increase. They are number one, protected. Number two, prosperous. Remember what Third John said. He said, I wish above all all things, beloved, that you prosper and be in health, even as your souls prosper. And then thirdly, I noticed about Israel that they're a passionate people. You know, they're passionate about who they are. They're passionate about who their God is, especially the Orthodox Jews. And when you go over there or you go to a, a Jewish quarter in New York City or even Los Angeles, a major metropolitan area where there's a large population of Jewish people, you will always see the Orthodox Jews in their black suits and those, those different looking hats, tall hats, big hats, and they have the little curls of hair going down. And they could care less what anybody thinks about them. They, they wear their beanies on their holy days and they'll go to a ball game or they'll go to work or they'll go to a restaurant and wear that piece of religious garment. And they could care less what anybody thinks. I've been on airplanes where, where, where the Jews would, the, the, the rabbis would walk to the back of the plane and, and, and begin to rock 
walk back and forth and pray and have their prayer book in public. There's no sacred public line of definition with those people. They're passionate about what they believe and they're passionate about who they believe in. And I couldn't help but think even their little children, you know, if you've ever seen the little children being raised in that faith, they, they are not ashamed. They're passionate. And I'm praying that in the body of Christ that we see that same parallel blessing, that we not only be protected like Israel is protected in these days and our families protected, but that we be prosperous, that we not only be prosperous and see our deserts and our dry barren lands begin to produce fruit in every area of our life, but thirdly, that we become a passionate people, that we become passionate for the Word of God. I'm telling you, I don't live for this world. I don't live for the stuff of this world. Jesus is the center of my life. If anything is not the center, if he's not the center of your life, not the lake, not a boat, not a car, not a house, Jesus, Jesus must be the center. And we got to get passionate about that again. You know, passionate about the word of God, passionate about his plan and his purpose, passionate about prayer, passionate about reading the scriptures. I see them uh, when I go to Israel, I see the Jews going to that wailing wall and they're passionate. They rock back and forth as they hold their prayer uh, book and, and they will stand sometimes for hours and they will passionately pray. Where is that passion in your life? Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I want some passion is what he says. I want some passion in, for the house of God. I want some passion for the presence of God. I want some passion for the word of God. And I'm speaking today that as we see that in natural Israel, so it's true in spiritual Israel, the church. And then lastly, fourthly, there is something that I noticed. They're not only prosperous and they're not only protected and they're not only passionate, but Israel, I believe, is prepared. And I believe God needs us to be prepared. Do you know that they are so aware of their enemies and their great hatred for the nation of Israel that they're not given an option that when the teenagers turn 18, they are immediately drafted into the military so that they'll be prepared to fight. Every young man at 18, and I've seen them when we've been over there, you know, to Israel, you will see beautiful little olive skin, black hair, brown eyes, little beautiful girls, 18 years of age, walking all over the streets in military fatigue because they're drafted. They, 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 they give no choice. It's not a choice. They understand we must be prepared because the enemy wants to destroy our nation. And I couldn't help but think of how many times I've been to Israel and I've seen the beautiful young people. Many times you'll see them in a group. Maybe it's their day off, but they carry their M16s with them. They have to. They, they are out in military uniforms and you'll see the young girls and the young boys. They don't, by the way, they don't have any gangs in Israel. <laughs> They all go into the military and they don't have time to get in gangs and shoot one another. They don't, they don't have any alcoholism or drug addiction to speak of in Israel because they don't have time for that stuff. They take a generation and they prepare them for war. What a parallel we need to see in this generation that, that we need to be prepared for the times that we're living in. That we need to understand that there's a war going on, a war for our families a war for our sons and our daughters, a war, a real enemy. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Are you prepared for that war? Are you playing games? Are you asleep? Are you, are, are you lukewarm and cold and indifferent? Are you out of church and not living for God? Are you, are you living for the thing, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the, the pride of life? This is your wake-up call. We need to be prepared. And when trouble comes, like with my daughter, when that, when that moment, that moment that could have changed everything, I believe that prayer made a difference. I believe that, that being in covenant with God made a difference in that moment. We were prepared. You know, I don't wait till crisis comes to pray. 
I believe we ought to be prepared ahead of time. You ought to be prayed up right now. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what tonight holds. You don't know what a week from now you'll face. But I know one thing. If I'm prepared and I'm prayed up and I'm passionate about Jesus, whatever comes my way, greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. And the same is true for you. Are you aware of the fact that, that we have real enemies that there's an enemy out there and we must stay prepared. I've watched them as the young people would go up to the wailing wall and the Jewish soldiers. And I saw, I've seen them as they would hold in one hand their prayer book and have an M16 <laughs> in the other hand. And they'll go up and pray with a prayer book, reading their prayers out of the prayer book in one hand on their holy day and have an M16 in the... And I thought, what a, what a beautiful picture. And sometimes they'll go into synagogue and they won't take their guns into synagogue. They'll lay them outside and they have a place for them to put, put their guns. And they'll go in and, and hear the teaching of the rabbi and come out. And on their way out of the synagogue, they pick up their M16. They're ready for war. Hallelujah. I tell you, we got to do more than go to church and be entertained. We got to get prepared for spiritual warfare and understand that we're in a battle. Put on the whole armor of God. Get your spiritual M16. Get your prayer book. Get your life together and be prepared for war. And I'm encouraging you today that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, this is your moment because there's a God who loves you. And I'm preaching today that as you... As you connect your life with the gospel of Jesus Christ, what he said about Israel, he says about you. He said about Israel, you are the apple of my eye. You are the center of everything that I see. The apple of the eye means you are, you have my full attention. And when you give your heart to Jesus Christ, he pronounces you are protected. He pronounces you are prosperous. He pronounces, you can receive the passion of the Holy Spirit in His fire. And lastly, you are prepared. No matter what happens, no matter what ISIS does, no matter what any of the enemies of the church do, no matter what your enemies do, you are prepared because you have Jesus and you have Him in your life. What about you? Do you know Him as your Savior? Do you know Him as your Lord today? Have you made Him Lord? Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my home. I need you in my family. I'm not ready for your coming, and I need to get ready. And I want you to protect, to prosper, to give me passion, to give me that, that preparation that I need to be ready. That's the last point. They're prepared. Are you prepared for the coming of the Lord? Are you prepared if Jesus were to call you home today? Ask Him into your heart today and He'll cleanse you and He'll save you. I want to close with this. In the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, He gave three instructions, end time instructions for people. He said, seeing these things in this time that we're living in, it's high time that you awake because your salvation is nearer than it ever was and that you abstain from drunkenness and lasciviousness and, and worldliness, listen, and fulfilling the lust thereof, that Scripture says, and that you realize the redemption that you've looked for and heard about all of your life. The coming of the Lord is near. I see three instructions in that for the end time people. Listen to this. He says, number one, I want you, I want you to wake up. He said, it's high time that we awaken. Boy, I hear this in my spirit. Because so many people in the church who, who at one time were passionate about God, who at one time really loved the Lord, but you have fallen to sleep spiritually, and it's a trick of the enemy. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit is screaming, wake up. Something's missing. Something's not there. Something that, that you long for that the world can't satisfy. Wake up. Number two, I hear in that scripture in Romans 13, he said, clean up. He said, come out of drunkenness. Come out of the, the lust of the flesh. Come out of that. Clean up. Wake up. Jesus is coming. Clean up. Jesus is coming. And lastly, he said, look up. Your redemption is nearer than it ever was before. This is no time 
to be playing God games. This is an hour that's serious. And I'm telling you, the blessings that we see on Israel, I believe, are on our life in the church. Get your family in church. Go to church. Be a part of the church because there's safety there. There God will protect you. There God will prosper you. There God will prepare you. There you will see the blessings of God overtake your life. And I thank you for watching this program. My announcer is going to talk to you now. And I'm going to come back for a closing moment. You can be a part of an unprecedented moment in history when you join Jensen Franklin and Kingdom Connection partners around the globe to help build the Celebration Center in Jerusalem. Your most generous gift today will help make a difference in the very heart of Jerusalem, helping the Jews come to know Jesus as the Messiah and opening the doors of worldwide revival. With your gift this month, request Jensen Franklin's new series, Holy Spirit Revival. In this inspiring series, you'll discover the importance of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You'll also learn how to receive God's favor and blessings, the way the Holy Spirit imparts life to the spiritually dead, and our need to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance. If God is calling you to make a difference for His people in a greater way, with a gift of $1,000 or more, we will send you the Holy Spirit Revival 3CD teaching, along with a beautiful Jerusalem stone gift, commemorating your support of Israel through the Celebration Center in Jerusalem. Whatever you invest in the ministry today, Jensen Franklin will take your name and the name of your family to Jerusalem, to the Western Wall, and pray for you there on the day of Pentecost. God is calling you to be a part of His outpouring of the Holy Spirit on all nations. Call now and spark revival around the world by giving today. I really want you to pray about being a part of the miracle that's taking place in the nation of Israel because I believe what we're doing there is going to impact that nation and, and potentially the world. Nine congregations uh, in the building that we're building, and I need your help. I know you can be a part. I believe these four blessings I preach, the protection, the passion, the prosperity, and the blessing, the preparedness will come on you as you link with what we're doing in Jerusalem. Will you be one of the 500 to help us in an amazing way, in a significant way? Do your very best. And I believe if you will do it, God will prosper you and God will bless you. There's a blessing that comes on people who bless the nation of Israel. He said in Genesis, I'll bless those that bless you. I'll curse those that curse you. That's why I'm so excited about this project. And in October of this year, that building will be completed and you can have a part. You can have a memorial before God for you and your family in the holy city of Jerusalem. Help us and God will bless you. Register now for Forward Conference 2015 with special guests Stephen Furtick, Beth Redman, Reggie Dabbs, Rich Wilkerson Jr., Banning Liebscher, Jensen Franklin, McCray Elevation Worship and Jesus Culture For more information and special group rates go online at forwardconference.org Life is real There's joy There's laughter and chaos Lifelong friendships are forged Love is found Moments cherished and never forgotten. Life is a gift. And together we are real family, real friends, real people, experiencing real life. This is Free Chapel. This program has been brought to you by the friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. For more information on this broadcast or for additional resources, go online at jensenfranklin.org.